All right, so today uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive okay. into Mira Puma extract powder. Sounds interesting. Yeah, and specifically, we're going to be looking at BulkSupplements.com's version on Amazon. All right. Um, and curious to see what we find. Yeah, we found some pretty interesting stuff about this product and about the herb itself. Yeah, it's always fascinating to kind of dig beneath the surface. Yeah. You know, and see what's really going on with these products. Yeah, and what's really interesting is the way they're marketing it. Oh, how so? Um, it's not just like what Mira Puma can do. It's like this whole idea of intuitive wellness support. Whoa, interesting. Like they're really trying to tap into something a little bit deeper than just the physical effects. Right, yeah. Like listen to your body. It knows what it needs kind of thing. Yeah, appeal to people who are already kind of on that, you know, that wavelength. Right, exactly. And, you know, they, they also claim this powder is rich in natural nutrients and supports flourishing overall health and well-being. Well, that's a pretty big claim. Yeah, those are some pretty bold statements. Yeah, those are some pretty big promises. Exactly, and that's where things get a little bit tricky. Okay. Because they don't really say what those nutrients are. You know, they oh. just emphasize natural nutrients. Natural nutrients, but what does that actually mean? Right, and what does flourishing overall health even look like? In real life, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a vague... It's very broad. Very broad claim. Yeah. Right. I'm curious to see what their ingredients list looks like. Yeah, me too. I was also wondering about that, like what are the actual ingredients in this stuff? Yeah. Well, the list is short and sweet. Sure. It's Mira Prama extract from the bark and dextrin. Dextrin. Okay. So that's basically a type of carbohydrate often used as a filler in supplements. Right. Okay. So the ingredient list is pretty straightforward. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. Right. Um, but what are people actually saying about this product? You yeah. Know? That's the real test. Yeah. Right. Well, what are the actual experiences like? What are people experiencing when they take this? Right. So... The product has a pretty decent rating on Amazon. Okay. 4.3 out of 5 stars. All right, not bad. Yeah. But when you dig into the reviews, it's a real mixed bag. Ah, so it's the classic online review dilemma, you know? Right. You got some people who love it and some people who hate it. Exactly. You've got some people raving about increased energy and stamina. Okay. Even mentioning you know, a boost in certain areas. Interesting. Yeah. Sounds promising for some. Right, but then you have others who weren't so impressed, like right. one reviewer who noticed a change in the product's color and texture and was worried that the quality had gone down. Hmm, that's a good point. Yeah. You know, when you're buying supplements online especially, it can be hard to know if you're getting what you paid for. Right, like how do you know that the product is consistent and that it's actually high quality? Exactly, and especially if there's been a change like that, it can be concerning. You know, yeah. if the color or texture has changed, it makes you wonder what else has changed. Exactly, and it really highlights this need for transparency. Yes, so, definitely. Like reputable companies should be upfront about their sourcing and their manufacturing processes and their quality control measures. Absolutely. They should be able to tell you exactly where their ingredients come from and how the product is made. Right. They want you to feel confident in what you're buying. Exactly. Okay. So we've talked about the product itself, the marketing claims, right. the ingredients, and even dipped our toes into the world of customer reviews. Yeah. We've gotten a pretty good overview so far. But I have to admit, I'm really curious about the herb itself. Yeah. What exactly is Mirapuama? Yeah, like where does it come from? What's the deal with this stuff? Well, get this. Mirapuama, sometimes called potency wood, is a plant native to the Amazon rainforest. Whoa. Potency wood already sounds interesting. Yeah, it has a long and colorful history of traditional use. Okay. Imagine deep in the rainforest, shamans have been using this plant for centuries. Potency wood and shamans. Okay, now we're talking. Yeah. Tell me more about these traditional uses. So traditionally, it's been used for a variety of purposes, but particularly as an aphrodisiac and for combating fatigue. Oh, wow. So it's not just a modern day supplement fad. No, not at all. It has deep roots, literally. Liter yeah, literally deep roots in traditional medicine. That's fascinating. And in recent years, it's gained some attention for potential cognitive benefits and as an energy booster. Right. People are starting to rediscover its potential. That's really interesting. So we've got this herb with a long history of some exciting but limited scientific research right. and a whole lot of anecdotal evidence from people who swear by it. Yeah, it sounds like we're dealing with a bit of a mystery here. Yeah, what do you think? I think you hit the nail on the head. It's definitely an area ripe for further exploration, but it also reminds us to be cautious and make informed decisions when it comes to supplements. 
Right. There's often a lot more to the story than what you see on the surface. Yeah, you can't just take everything at face value. You gotta dig a little deeper. Exactly. And that's what we're here for. That's what we're doing today. Exactly. All right, so should we take a closer look at some of these claims and what the science says about them? Yeah, let's dive in. All right, let's do it. Let's see what we can uncover. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And speaking of going deeper, you mentioned some pretty bold claims being made about this Mirapuama extract powder. Yeah. Like, can it really live up to the hype? Right, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. We've got this mix of traditional use and intriguing anecdotes and a little bit of scientific research. Mm -hmm. But can Mirakwama actually deliver on its promises? What do you think? Well, I think it's important to remember that supplements aren't magic bullets. You know, right. they can play a role in supporting overall health but they're not a quick fix. Right, it's all about a holistic approach. Exactly. Diet, exercise, managing stress, all that good stuff. Right, all the fundamentals. Right. Supplements can be a helpful addition, but they're not a substitute for a healthy lifestyle. Right. They're not gonna magically fix everything. No, they're not a cure-all. So let's break down some of these specific claims, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, one of the most common things you hear about Muraprama is its reputation as an aphrodisiac. Right. I mean, it's even called potency wood. Potency wood, that's quite a name. Yeah, is there any truth to that ancient belief? Well, like a lot of traditional remedies, the science on Mirapuama's aphrodisiac properties is still emerging. Okay. There have been some small studies suggesting it might have a positive effect on libido, particularly in men. Really, what kind of studies are we talking about? For example, one study found that Mirapuama extract seemed to improve erectile function and libido in men with mild to moderate erectile dysfunction. Hmm. Interesting. And another study, this one involving both men and women, okay. reported an increase in sexual desire and satisfaction after taking Mirapuama. So there's some actual scientific backing, even if it's limited for this age-old claim. Yeah, it's not just folklore. There's some evidence to support it. But I imagine there's more to the story, right? Of course, science is rarely a simple yes or no. Right. It's complicated. Yeah, exactly. So what else should we consider? Well, for one thing, these were relatively small studies. Okay and more research is needed to confirm these findings. So we need larger studies, more data. Exactly. We need to see if these results hold up in larger populations. Okay. And what? And we also need to figure out things like optimal dosage and long-term effects. Right, because those are important factors too. Very important. We need to know how much is safe and effective and what the long-term implications are. Right, it's always important to remember that one or two small studies don't tell the whole story. Exactly. It's like reading one chapter of a book and thinking, you know, the whole plot. Right. You're missing a lot of the context. Exactly. Okay. So we need more research, but it's interesting to see that there is some scientific support for this traditional use. Yeah. It's definitely promising. Now, what about claims related to energy and stamina? Okay. I've heard some athletes swear by Mirapuama for a natural boost. Yeah. That's another area where we need more research. Okay. Some people believe that Mirapuama might work by supporting the body's stress response system. Hmm, that's interesting. It's not necessarily giving you a direct energy boost, okay. but helping you better handle stress, okay. which could lead to feeling more energized. Interesting, so it's more about resilience than a jolt of caffeine. Right, it's not like drinking a cup of coffee. Yeah. It's more about helping your body adapt and keep going strong. I see, so it's like supporting your adrenal glands or something. Yeah, something like that. But I, I, again, we need more research to confirm this and to understand the exact mechanisms involved. Right, of course, because there could be other things going on. Exactly, there could be other factors at play. It seems like a common theme with Mirapuama is that there are these intriguing traditional uses and anecdotal reports, mm -hmm. but the scientific evidence is often lagging behind. That's very true. And it's a good reminder that just because something has been used traditionally for centuries doesn't automatically mean it's effective or safe. Right. It's always a good idea to approach things with a healthy dose of curiosity and skepticism. I love that curiosity and skepticism, two sides of the same coin. Exactly. When it comes to exploring these kinds of topics. Absolutely. So for someone intrigued by the energy boosting claims, what would you advise? I'd say approach it with cautious optimism. Okay. If you're looking for a natural way to support your energy, Mirapurama might be worth exploring. Okay. But don't expect miracles and do your research before adding it to your routine. Great advice. Now there was another claim we saw in the product listing that caught my eye. Okay. Mirapuama is a rich source of antioxidants. Oh yes, antioxidants. Those are important. Yeah, can you explain what those are and why they're important? Certainly. So 
Antioxidants are like little protectors in your body. Okay. Imagine them as tiny warriors fighting off damage caused by free radicals. Okay. Which are unstable molecules that can contribute to aging and disease. Okay. I've heard of antioxidants, but that explanation makes so much more sense. Yeah, it's like they're fighting the good fight against cellular damage. Right, exactly. So where does Mirapuama fit into this battle? Well, some early studies suggest that Mirapuama contains compounds with antioxidant properties. Interesting. But we need more research to understand the specific types and amounts of antioxidants present. Okay. And how they might benefit our health. So potentially another point in Europuama's favor, but more research is needed. Exactly. It's a promising area, but we need more data. I feel like that's the theme of our deep dive today. It certainly highlights the ongoing exploration of this plant's potential. Right. Speaking of potential, there's one more claim we haven't touched on yet. Okay. Some call Mirapuama brain food because of its purported cognitive benefits. Oh, interesting. Is there any science behind that? That's a fascinating area of research. Some believe Mirapuama might enhance cognitive function by improving blood flow to the brain. Okay. And protecting brain cells from damage. Interesting. It's like giving your brain a little extra support to stay sharp and focused. Okay, so potentially a brain booster. Potentially. But again, we need more research to be sure. Always more research. It's incredible how this one plant has so many potential uses. It really speaks to the power of nature and the incredible diversity of compounds found in plants. It really does. So for someone interested in Wirapuama for its potential brain boosting properties, what's your advice? The same as before approach with cautious optimism. Do your research and consult with a healthcare professional if you have any concerns. Solid advice. It's amazing how much we've uncovered about Moriprama. It is. We've gone from a simple product listing to a deeper exploration of its history, traditional uses, potential benefits, and the science behind it all. It's been quite a journey. It really has, and it's a perfect example of how even seemingly simple things can have such complex and fascinating stories behind them. Absolutely. That's what makes these deep dives so rewarding. Exactly. The opportunity to explore, question, and expand our understanding of the world around us. I couldn't agree more now before we get too carried away with all the potential upsides. Right. I think it's important to acknowledge that Mirapuama isn't just some random ingredient. It has a rich history and cultural significance, especially for indigenous communities. You're absolutely right. It's crucial to be mindful of the origins of this plant and to approach it with respect. Exactly. We don't want to contribute to any exploitation or disrespect of traditional knowledge. Well said. It's all about approaching Mirapalma with a holistic perspective that considers both its potential benefits and its cultural significance. Absolutely. All right. So with that in mind, let's shift gears a little bit. Okay. And talk about the potential downsides of Mirapalma. All right. Let's dive into that. Are there any known side effects or safety concerns? Well, based on the research available, Mirapuama is generally considered safe when taken as directed. Okay. However, like yeah. any substance, it can potentially cause side effects in some people. Okay, so it's not a completely free pass. No, not complete. What are some of the side effects people have reported? Some of the most common ones include insomnia headaches and gastrointestinal issues like nausea or diarrhea. Hmm, not the most pleasant side effect. No, not at all. Anything more serious to be aware of? There have been a few isolated reports of Mirapuama potentially interacting with certain medications, okay. such as blood thinners and blood pressure medications. That's a good reminder that it's crucial to talk to your doctor before taking any new supplement, especially if you're already on medication. Absolutely. It's always better to err on the side of caution and get professional guidance. Right, because you never know how different substances might interact. Exactly. It's yeah. better to be safe than sorry. So it seems like Mirapuama has a relatively good safety profile, but it's not completely risk-free. Exactly, and it's important to remember that everyone's body is different. Right. What's safe for one person might not be safe for another. Now, what about dosage? How much Mirapuama should someone take? Is there a standard recommendation? Unfortunately, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Okay. The optimal dosage can depend on a lot of factors, like age, health status, mm -hmm. and the specific form of Mirapuama you're using. Okay, so no magic number. How can someone figure out the right dosage for them? I always recommend starting with a low dose. Okay. And gradually increasing it as needed. Okay. Paying close attention to how your body responds. Makes sense. Start slow and see how you feel. Exactly. It's all about listening to your body's signals. Now, you mentioned different forms of Mwaraporma. Yes. I've seen it sold as a powder capsules and even liquid extracts. Right. Maybe. Does the form matter? 
yes, the form can definitely affect the dosage and how your body absorbs the supplement. Right. For example, powders and liquid extracts tend to be more concentrated than capsules. So you might need to adjust the dosage depending on the form you choose. Exactly. And always choose a reputable brand that provides clear dosage instructions for the specific form you're using. Great advice. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. We've explored the traditional uses, potential benefits, the side effects, dosage, and even the different forms of Mora Plama. It's like we've peeled back the layers of this fascinating herb. It really is. It's been quite the journey. It has. We've gone from a simple product listing to a much deeper understanding of Mira Plama itself. And it's a perfect example of how even seemingly simple things can have such complex and fascinating stories behind them. Absolutely. That's what I love about these deep dives. Yeah. There's always something new to learn. Always something to discover. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what are some key takeaways for our listeners? I think it's important to emphasize that the decision to try any supplement, including Muraporma, is a personal one. Right. There's no right or wrong answer. It's all about making an informed decision based on your individual needs and circumstances. Exactly. Weigh the potential benefits against potential risks. Do your research and talk to your healthcare provider if you have any concerns. And remember, supplements are just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to overall health and well being. That's such an important point. Yeah. A balanced diet, regular exercise, stress management, and a supportive social network are all essential ingredients for a healthy and fulfilling life. Couldn't have said it better myself. So before we sign off, I have one final thought-provoking question for you, our dear listener. So after all this talk about Mirapuama, would you consider trying it? Hmm. What would make you decide yes or no? Yeah, that's the perfect question to leave our listeners pondering, you know? Right. There's no right or wrong answer. It's a personal choice. Exactly. It depends on your own needs and what you're hoping to achieve. Right. It's about weighing those potential benefits against the risks. Exactly. Doing your homework. Mm -hmm. And maybe even chatting with your doctor, especially if you're already taking other medications. Absolutely. Always a good idea to get professional guidance. Right. And remember, supplements are just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to feeling your best. So true. A healthy diet, moving your body, managing stress. Mm -hmm. Having a good support system, those are all key ingredients too. Mm, couldn't agree more. Well, I think we've explored just about every nook and cranny of Miraquama extract powder today. It's been quite the journey, hasn't it? It really has. From a simple Amazon listing to a deep dive into the history of the they, the science and the cultural significance of this intriguing plant. I feel like we've all learned a lot today, myself included. Me too. Always something new to discover. So until next time, Keep those brains buzzing and those bodies moving. Keep exploring. And remember, approach all things health and wellness with a healthy dose of curiosity and a sprinkle of skepticism. That's the perfect recipe for a well-informed and empowered life. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. See you next time.